We'll give a brief update to where we are at with the cases here in South Australia, but I also want to outline the rationale for why we are doing what we're putting in place today. But I'd like to also, first of all, thank every South Australian uh, for coming with us on this journey. We need to stamp this virus out at this point. We haven't had it in our state for many months and we need to get back to that wonderful place where we could enjoy the things that we all enjoy. Unfortunately, we now have it in our state and this is what we must do. So since yesterday, and you are possibly expecting me to give you a very large number of cases, but I'm not going to. I'm going to give you a small number of cases. It's small but critical. So today we have two new cases. Um, uh, both um, are linked to the Parafield cluster. So most importantly, we have been able to link all, our, all of our cases to date. Um, so t uh, to date, there are 22 cases linked to that cluster. There are also an additional seven people who are either awaiting test results or we had an initial test that was negative, but we're highly suspicious and we're treating them as infectious. Due to the high risk of onward transmission in the community, all of those suspected cases, as I explained yesterday, are going to be treated as infectious and we've put um, the public health in, in train um, as a precaution. The other thing, uh, before I explain the rationale for our decisions today, I want to give a really strong advice because this is very, very important. Anybody who got takeaway delivery from Woodville Pizza Bar, 58 Woodville Road, Woodville, between the 6th and 16th of November, so that's a 10-day period, must immediately self-quarantine and get tested. Okay, so that is really, really important information today. They must go directly to the testing location, wear a mask and alert the staff that they've visited the pizza bar. We're in the process of working through credit card details so that we can directly contact those people. But it's at a critical stage in our investigation and we really need uh, to make sure all of those people are aware. So if you have people and friends and family living in Woodville, get hold of them now and ask them have they been to that pizza bar. And all of those details are on our website. Now this is still very early days in this cluster and I want to talk you through the rationale of why we're asking every South Australian to do this at this point in time. Um, all of the cases, as I said, the positive cases have been linked and that's a phenomenal effort and it means that we are very early at the beginning of this and we have a very, very short window of opportunity to close it down and stamp it out in our community. This particular strain has had certain characteristics. It has a very, very short incubation period. That means when somebody gets exposed, it's taking 24 hours or even less for that person to become infectious to others. And the other characteristic of the cases we've seen so far is they've had minimal symptoms and sometimes no symptoms, but have been able to pass it on to other people. We also know because of that characteristic that what we call a generation is only about three days. And a generation is when one uh, uh, case is passing it on to the next level. And then that level, so if they pass it on to two people, they'll pass it on to the next lot of people. And that's your third generation. At the moment in South Australia, we have done all the contact tracing up to the fourth generation. But the fifth generation is out there in our community and at the moment we are contact tracing to get onto that fifth generation. And that's the call out for the Woodville Pizza Bar. So the reason for going for uh, this um, six day period of really significant restrictions is that's two generations. As I said, we're up to the fifth and then we'll be getting up to the sixth. We don't have any time to wait. If I just thought about this all day and then told the police commission, the premier, to tonight, we would already be that um, 12 hours behind. So we really do need to act fast on this. Um, so that's the rationale. The information also that I got last night um, cements uh, my concerns. So a little bit more information about these cases. So the one case that we received um, information about yesterday um, midday was of a young man who works at one of our Medi hotels, but it was not the Peppers Medi hotel where our other two, uh, three cases um, have been. It was at the Stamford. 
And in fact, this person wasn't a security guard, wasn't a nurse, and wasn't a police officer, but worked in the kitchen. And that made us a very concerned because we couldn't work out how on earth had that person become infected. You know, how were those two Medi hotels linked? And people questioned me afterwards, did we have staff working across and should we have done that? Well, what happened last night was that we made the link. So we had a close contact of one of our security guards who actually uh, was a, a working part-time in the pizza bar. And uh, the case we got last night also worked in the pizza bar at the same time as the person who was at the Stanford um, went and got a pizza. So we absolutely have linked all of that. We will get the genomics to prove it, but we are absolutely certain with our history taking that that's what's happened. And that means to me, when I saw this, it cemented my fears that this virus is breeding very, very rapidly. You've got a short incubation period and you've got three days as those generations move on. So um, I know this is an absolutely big ask, but if we leave this any longer, and if we have people moving around the community and having a lot of contact with other people, then we're gonna be in this for the long haul and we will be like uh, the, the experience in Victoria, where we get increasing cases every single day and we have to go into a significant lockdown for a very long period of time to snuff it out. Um, and, and to get rid of every last bit of community transmission. So this is a different strategy to what has happened in Victoria. And I guess there'll be other public health physicians and epidemiologists and other specialists around Australia who'll be looking at us and saying, gee, they're doing things a bit strange there in South Australia. Um, we did it differently here in Victoria. But I am using the science and I'm also using the information that my team already has got from this, our experience here. And I know that this is the right thing to do. I can't be making this decision in two or three weeks time or even two or three days time because it's gonna to be too late. This is going to put a, a lot of strain on many people and this is the time to be patient, to be calm and to trust uh, in people that are there to support you. We all need to look after each other. It's no point panicking and rushing out to the shops and you know buying up lots of toilet paper. We've got to be looking out for other people. And uh, my advice is if you've got vulnerable members of your family, so elderly people or people with chronic conditions, you give them a call and say, I'm gonna be there to look after you and help you out for the next six days. And uh, what can we do to support you? And that's the sort of community spirit I know that South Australians have. So um, I'm uh, very happy to take questions, but I'm hopeful that I've been able to explain where we are in South Australia and why we are doing it this way. <laughs>